Happy Monday, July 8th, everyone. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful July 4th holiday weekend out there. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about extreme heat and humidity building further north and east across the United States and North America throughout this coming week and into the weekend. And Hurricane Barrel with all eyes on that system as well. We'll dive into the details with impacts, its track, and everything that you need to know about Hurricane Barrel as well. So looking here at today's weather forecast, we do have a high pressure ridge across this desert southwest another one over here toward florida and georgia and right in between that is hurricane barrel that did make landfall actually this morning in texas and we're going to talk about more on that in just a moment, but let's zoom the picture out here and look at the weather alerts across the United States because we have extensive heat headlines across the western U.S. We have excessive heat warnings in the pinks, excessive heat watches in the maroon reds, and in the oranges, those are heat advisories, and some of those heat advisories extend over here with that second ridge across the southeast coast and up toward the New England and mid-Atlantic coast as well. And then right in between, we have hurricane warnings that persist. We also also have tornado watches and we have flood watches that extend from East Texas all the way up into portions of the Ohio River vicinity as we do have the track of barrel that's going to be providing us with several inches of accumulation as we go through the next few days. So let's first look at our temperatures this afternoon and it'll be a hot day across the west. We're gearing up for more triple digits across the Sacramento Valley in California the Las Vegas area, Phoenix here up to 111 this afternoon. A lot of these areas out west here, especially the desert southwest, have been breaking records and a couple even all-time records as well. And then when you throw in the heat and humidity, especially over here in the southeast, we know we have the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic Ocean at our disposal, a lot of moisture sources here. So those dew points will be rising into the 70s. And this is what the real feel will be to the body as you walk outdoors into the triple digits. We go across most of Dixie Alley there into Florida and up the East Coast. So definitely seeing some heat up there. But to the north, we're seeing a lot of cooler weather this afternoon afternoon again across the Rockies, across the northern and central plains, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes region, and all of southern Canada. So if you live in those vicinities, make sure to get outdoors and enjoy the nice weather because it is certainly a nice one out there with those temperatures. Now, looking here at Barrel, the system did move ashore here of the coastal Texas this morning. And it did make landfall as a hurricane and is now moving through East Texas, Louisiana, and into southwestern Arkansas with very heavy rainfall. And just looking here at the water vapor imagery and zooming it in, you can see a lot of the moisture here. You can see a little bit of that eye still left over there near the Houston area or just west of Houston. Some rain bands extending around that. And then look at all the subsidence, the dry air outside of that into North Texas here up toward Wichita Falls and over toward the Texas Panhandle. A lot of dry air. So you're not seeing a drop of rain in West. Texas, but several inches of rain in East Texas. That's how dynamic this system is. Here's the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. The system is still a very strong tropical storm, so it's no longer a hurricane. It's down to 70 mile per hour, very strong tropical storm. Movement is starting to speed up as it moves onto land, north northeast at 13 miles per hour, so we'll arrive tomorrow morning into the Little Rock area as possibly a tropical depression or a post-tropical cyclone, and then moving up through portions of the Ohio Valley as kind of um, that extra tropical system, just kind of a strong low pressure system as we go in towards the next few days through the middle and end of the week. Looking here today, we have the very strong system moving in here to portions of East Texas, Louisiana, and into Arkansas. Very heavy rain. These rain bands are going to provide us with torrential downpours as we go through the day and concern for some severe weather in form of tornadoes on the eastern side of the system. You always look on the eastern and northeastern quadrant of hurricanes and tropical storms for some tornado potential. And we have a level three out of five enhanced risk down here from far southwest Arkansas, northwest Louisiana, and then around the Shreveport area, and then into east Texas here with a marginal going all the way up into portions of southern Illinois and you have a 10% chance of a tornado within a 25 mile radius of the Shreveport area. So if you live in Shreveport, Little Rock, Lake Charles, Houston, 
and potentially even all the way up to Branson, Missouri here as we go into the afternoon, evening hours, we have to be watching out for some spin-ups, some tornadoes. I wouldn't even rule out a strong tornado here with one of these bands moving in over the Shreveport area as we go through later today. Going into Tuesday, the system moves up into the mid-Mississippi Valley, getting a little bit more disorganized as it's moving over a larger chunk of land. It's speeding up though, so that's some good news, but it's still going to drop some heavy rain and a concern again tomorrow for more severe weather level one out of five marginal across portions of the Ohio Tennessee River Valley another marginal risk up here as well um, with another little system up toward Boston as well and looking at the tornado potential with the remnants of Barrel Paducah down here toward Memphis Nashville the Lexington uh, Louisville area into the Cincinnati region, Indianapolis. We just had to be watching out for some spin-up tornadoes here as we go into tomorrow. That's a 2% chance within a 25-mile point. Going into Wednesday, the heavy rainfall threat moves up there toward the southern lakes, so Lake Erie areas and getting into the northeast. We're going to start to see heavy rain on Wednesday. Thursday, the system still is kind of stalling out across the I-95 corridor, bringing us more heavy rain. But then after that, we turn our attention to the west as high pressure and a strong ridge will begin to develop later on here in the week. And look at that, the rainfall amounts here from East Texas all the way into Northwest Arkansas. Widespread swath of rain, potentially up to locally eight inches over the next couple of days. And then that will spread up into the Ohio and uh, parts of the Tennessee River Valley, into the Southern Lakes, Detroit, back there toward Indianapolis, St. Louis, Paducah, all the way back toward Branson, Missouri there, Springfield, Missouri. A couple inches of rain for you going through that Thursday, July 11th time frame. North and west of there very sharp cutoff here um the des moines area lincoln omaha all you guys will mostly stay dry through the, the week ahead and all this rainfall that we're seeing is going to lead to a lot of flooding potential. We have a large, slight, moderate risk for flooding. So some numerous occasions of flash flooding will be likely today here from southwest Arkansas back into east Texas. Slight risk of flash flooding here from northern Arkansas into western Indiana as we go into tomorrow. And then as we go into Wednesday, it's all about the Great Lakes region into the northeast. Marginal slight risk for flash flooding there as we go into Wednesday, July the 10th. Looking at temperature trends through the rest of the week here for those of you that are wondering, well, with the cloud cover and precipitation in the middle of the country from the remnants of barrel, temperature anomalies will be stuck below normal. But out west, it's really going to heat up across the Cascades there. Washington State, British Columbia even, into Canada, Alberta, into Oregon, into California. A lot of these areas out west are going to be seeing temperatures up to 30 degrees above average for this time of year. So more record-shattering heat out west. That'll continue into Wednesday, into Thursday, and into Friday. But Friday, some of the heat starts to move further to the east and not as intense out west as it starts to expand with that heat as as we go to the middle of the week and toward the end of the week as well. And with all the heat building out west, I think the drought conditions are likely to expand and intensify. We already have pockets of abnormally dry or minor drought conditions here in the yellow. Those tan shaded colors, those are moderate drought conditions. And in the orange, that's severe drought extending into Washington State, northern Idaho, and western Montana. And I think those areas will start to worsen and expand in drought as we go through the next few days, whereas areas in the Ohio Valley will probably get rid of drought, most likely with some of these areas getting a lot of rain over the next few days. So that's some good news. Going to the weekend, looking at that ridge of high pressure here for Saturday, July 13th into Sunday, July 14th. You can see that donut hole here across the Four Corners region. That's the center of the ridge of high pressure. It's going to expand a little bit further to the east toward the Mississippi River Valley this weekend. Some more heat expanding towards places like Chicago, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, St. Paul down to Des Moines here in Kansas City. So expect it to be warming up this weekend in those areas and very dry as well. Very strong anchor high pressure system here. The storm track is going to be well to the north this weekend. And you can see that's mainly across southern Canada. So you can see where the jet stream is there this weekend all the way up into the southern Canadian prairie. So it's going to be hard pressed to see much organized shower storm activity in the United States going into the weekend ahead. And you can see really nothing too organized outside of a couple spotty showers or storms. The overall heavy rainfall track and storm track will be up here into the southern Canadian prairies from Alberta into Saskatchewan into Manitoba into Ontario and even Quebec as well and then maybe some tropical moisture getting into central and western Mexico for the weekend as well. 
And then finally, heading into the long range portion of the forecast in the next week, Monday, July 15th through Sunday, July 21st. Yeah, hard to believe we're already getting toward the third week now into July. And looking at that ridge, it's going to expand all across the United States. Above normal temperatures are favored. And these are from the experts at the Climate Prediction Center. And they, they also do forecast above average rains across the east and more dry weather out west here. Unfortunately, probably expanding and intensifying that drought. Again, like we were mentioning across the Pacific. Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West through next week. So thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below here at Weather on the Go. We will keep you covered on everything with barrel, the heat and humidity, the rounds of severe weather and the summer forecast and beyond ahead. And also make sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below to help this video get along here on YouTube. Make sure to leave any comments, questions and concerns below. If you do have any of them here, I'll answer them after the video. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Monday out there.